If you just read the bio for Dr. Steve, host of Weird Medicine on Sirius XM 103 and made popular by two really comedy shows, Opie and Anthony and Ron and Fez, you would have thought that this guy was was a bit of, uh, you know, a, a clown. Your show was better when you had medical questions. Hey! I've got diphtheria crushing my esophagus. I've got Ebola virus dripping from my nose. I've got the leprosy of the heart valve exacerbating my incredible woes. I want to take my brain out and blast it with the wave, an ultrasonic echographic and a pulsating shave. I want a magic pill for all my ailments, the health equivalent of Citizen Kane. And if I don't get it now in the tablet, I think I'm doomed and I'll have to go insane. I want a requiem for my disease, so I'm paging Dr. Steve. Dr. Steve! It's Weird Medicine, the first and still only uncensored medical show in the history of broadcast radio, now a podcast. I'm Dr. Steve with my little pal, Dr. Scott, the traditional Chinese medical practitioner. <laughs> I just realized I forgot to turn your um, your um, reverb off. Let me see here. Oh, leave it on. Okay. Leave it on. The traditional <laughs> Chinese medical practitioner gives me street cred. With the wacko alternative medicine assholes. Hello, Dr. Scott. Hey, Dr. Steve. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is a show for people who would never listen to a medical show on the radio or the internet. If you've got a question you're embarrassed to take to your regular medical provider, if you can't find an answer anywhere else, give us a call at 347 766 4323. That's 347. And Poohhead. Visit us on Twitter at Weird Medicine or at DR Scott WM and visit our website at drsteve.com for podcast medical news and stuff you can buy. Most importantly, we are not your medical providers. Take everything with a grain of salt. Don't act on anything you hear on the show without talking it over with your doctor, nurse practitioner, practical nurse, physician assistant, pharmacist, chiropractor, acupuncturist, yoga master, physical therapist, clinical laboratory scientist, registered dietitian, or whatever. All right, very good. Well, hello, Dr. Scott. Hey. Uh, don't forget to check out stuff.drsteve.com. Stuff, S-T-U-F-F, dot drsteve.com for all of your Amazon needs really keeps the uh, boat afloat, so to speak. <laughs> also, tweakedaudio.com. Offer code FLUID. will get you 33% off the best earbuds for the price and the best customer service anywhere. And they are a Tennessee company in Franklin, Tennessee. And uh, so we support them wholeheartedly. And also, if you want to lose weight with me, get to your ideal body weight before beach time, which is soon upon us. Yes. Noom. Dot drsteve.com is the path to do that. N O O M dot drsteve.com. You've heard about Noom. You've seen the commercials. Well, now you can try it for free for two weeks. And if you decide to do the three month program, which is cheaper, well, I don't want to say cheaper, it's less expensive than just about every other program out there. Um, that it, 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 it's, you know, you get 20% off. What do you think of that? 20% off. If you um, it's good stuff. go to noom.drsteve.com, but you can try it for free for two weeks first and then decide if you like it. It's a psychology program, not a diet. Just uh, check it out. And check out roadie.drsteve.com or just go to drsteve.com and scroll down um, at, uh, st- at the store or at stuff.drsteve.com. You can see a video of the roadie robotic guitar tuner, and this will tune any stringed instrument not orchestral instruments but regular you know guitar mandolin 12 string they have one for bass which i own and uh it's incredible you pluck the string and the stupid thing twists the knobs for you You don't have to do anything and you can do it in the middle of a gig with uh you know richie castellano blasting his uh guitar solo in the background and you can still make this thing work so it's really cool just go to stuff.drsteve.com or roadie, R-O-A-D-I-E dot drsteve.com. I think that works. All right. And check out Dr. Scott's website, as always, at simplyherbals.net. And hello, Dr. Scott. Hey, Dr. Steve. I hope you are well today. Well, yes. Just cold. Are you cold? Yeah, no. it was colder than shit today. Yeah, man. Outside the, the hell? This is ridiculous. April 21st, and I got out of my car to fill up the gas, and I was like, I've got to get it back in the car. It's terrible. I, I, coming over here today, I, th- it, I thought that we were going to have a little some sprinkles of snow, and we might get some tonight. Yeah, nobody gives a shit. But I did. Uh, I I was smart, and I did not plant 
my tomatoes when it looked like I could have because it was so warm last weekend. I'm really glad I didn't. I did the same thing. I thought about it and I thought, no, it's, a, it's like a sucker a sucker. Yeah, around here you know? it's the first weekend uh, after uh, Mother's Day is what they recommend. Anyway, nobody gives a shit. Let me see. Uh-oh. Bullshitting and get to the question. Wait, I'm sorry. What did you say? Can you please stop bullshitting? Okay. A <laughs> um, couple of things. The president of the United States was just on televis- television. The, today is the 21st of April, mm-hmm. 2021. And he said uh, that he was making sure that everyone 16 and above can get the vaccine now. And about 80% of people over the age of 65 have had at least one dose of the vaccine. So they're at least partially uh, protected. And uh, although cases are going up incrementally right now, deaths continue to decline. So that's good, particularly in that age group. They've fallen precipitously. So the vaccine right now seems to be working. Now, what we're hoping to avoid is a repeat of all of this when this, uh, if these variants become uh, predominant and they make you just as sick as the original thing did. Right. If that's the case and they avoid already established immunity, then it's a whole new pandemic. Mm. The good news is we can kick its ass so much faster. Mm. It's so much faster to create a variant vaccine than it is to create a vaccine de novo, in other words, from, from scratch. scratch. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like it's coming, though. The, 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 um, oh, I'm sorry. The, um, it looks like a lot of those variants are coming around the world, just like kind of the flu when yeah. it goes around the world. Sure. So. Well, we, uh, I'm in the booster trial for Pfizer. They haven't told me anything about it yet. But apparently there will be a booster trial and a variant trial that they're getting oh, well. ready to get cranked up. Okay. Because they've got these things um, already sequenced. Right. They know the the DNA, or the or RNA, and so they can make, uh, you know, a variant very easily. Well, a variant know, vaccine very easily. I mean. Right. And, you know, Dr. Steve, those scientists knew that the, the variations were coming. Yeah, just because of the way viruses do so. Sure, one would assume they probably had something kind of. Yeah, they're just waiting to yeah, see when what it the... starts to change. Here's what we're going to yeah. do, and so you know, one one would hope that they they had a little bit of um, of um, planning and knowledge instead of going in blind like sure. we did with the first one. Just miscoding mm-hmm. when you, when the virus starts to reproduce itself. If it miscodes an amino acid here or there, it'll make a slightly different spike protein Mm. some of those a very small subset may result in the the um virus being more communicable it might be more sticky and in while doing that it may make it less or more deadly or the same we don't know Mm. a lot of times viruses will evolve toward a less deadly strain Mm mm-hmm so they can hang around longer. Yeah. They and can infect, infect more, more people, people and nobody right. cares. Right. No one's trying to just destroy them like we are with this one. Mm-hmm. But I still think like like Godzilla destroy all monsters, <laughs> you know, destroy all viruses. It would be low. I had a biologist it. email me. Well, you know, some of them do some good stuff. I said, name three mm-hmm. that are pathogenic in humans. Yeah. No, I get that there are beneficial viruses out there that we have come to rely on certain things. I can't name any of them and don't really, you know, it's, it's some, you know, and some of it may even be major and some viruses may protect us from some pests that we otherwise wouldn't. Yeah. True. You know, like bacteriophages. Yep. Those are viruses that just infect bacteria. Mm. And some of those may be helping us in some way. Yep. But uh, the human pathogenic viruses, I don't see any benefit to those. I don't see a benefit to Norwalk virus. If I could just <laughs> <No>. <laughs> kill the virus that makes me throw up once every four years <laughs> yes. for yeah. three days straight, I would absolutely destroy it. Yeah, that puke virus is sucks. unpleasant. I hate it. Oh, God. And the first time you puke, it's like, well, that wasn't that bad. It's like the 20th time. It's like, oh, God, please make this stop. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I had the last time I had a really good one. We were in that that little city we used to work in. Yeah, and I was in actually in in, in clinic in there with you one day, and 
Man, I got that sucker. I stopped three times on the way home. Oh, and I hate just that. Just to blow chunks. It was horrible. Yeah, the first few, you know, it, it, uh, it hits you every 15 oh. minutes, and then it's like once an hour, and then once an hour and a half, and, you know, yeah. fi- finally horrible. you get some sleep and might wake you up once, and you puke a couple of times. And most of the time it's over, but Norwalk virus would go on 72 hours sometimes. Right. That's why it just destroys cruise ships when it gets in there, because it's not a 24-hour virus for a lot of people. (laughs) (laughs) It sucks. Stupid thing. Destroy those viruses, too. Get rid of those while you're at it. Get rid of them. While you're at it. Well, you want to take some questions? Yeah, let's do it. Number one thing, don't take advice from some asshole on the radio. I don't have... uh, I have done... I've had another shitty week, and so these... we're, We're listening to these cold. We haven't listened to them before. And we'll just, by God, see. And if we don't know how to answer them, I'll say so because we'll I'm make it honest. Up. We'll just make it up. Or, or, yeah, we'll just make it up. <laughs> yeah, this is an entertainment that's show. Right. We say at the beginning, don't do what we don't say. Don't listen to us anyway. That's we don't right. know. We don't yeah, know yeah, nothing. That's right. We're stupid. <clears throat> okay. Hey, Dr. Steve. This is uh, Matt Cupcakes. Um, I'm watching television, and I've seen a commercial for a medication called Sinosi. And it says it's for sleep apnea. Severe obstructive sleep apnea. What? What is it? How does it work? I know it says it doesn't take place in your CPAP, but what does it do? How does it work? All right, um, that's all for now. Bye. Thanks. The only thing that I can think of, and I have no idea what in the hell he's talking about, uh, but if it's a medication that you can buy over the counter, is most likely a palatal lubricant. I've seen those before where you spray it in the back of your throat, and it's a lubricant. And what it's supposed to do is keep uh, keep you from snoring, and by not snoring, you're breathing more easily. But I have no idea if those things actually work. Now, do, do, go ahead, because well, I've got some other ideas. I, I just wonder if he's talking about the Sinosi that's the prescription for um, for narcolepsy. Oh, I bet that's what he's talking about oh, for oh, daytime oh. sleepiness. It does not treat. It does not treat. Um, as far as I know, it doesn't treat. Um, yeah, sleep that's, apnea, but it's, but but treats narcolepsy, which is my guess. See, we don't go by brand names in our practice, so that's Solriamfetol is what that is. Okay. And yeah, it is. Um, you get up to uh, like nine hours of improved wakefulness with one dose, but it's not a stimulant. So, so I. I would I I I don't treat sleep apnea in my so let's find out what the what the mechanism is. Um, Sol Reamphetol. Now this is the stuff that Carl from Who Are These Podcasts gets all up in a wad about. Oh, who edit that out? Well, we're doing this live for radio, so I just can't do it. Sorry. It is um, derived from D phenylalanine. Oh, which is a basically an amino acid. And it is a norepinephrine dopamine reuptake inhibitor. Isn't that interesting? Mm. So uh, I is is not bupropion. Will you look that up Bup- and see bupropion. if that is not also a norepinephrine dopamine reuptake inhibitor, or it's very similar. So what this does is it um, it blocks the reuptake of noradrenaline. Because norepinephrine is noradrenaline, so it's a form, you know, a variant of adrenaline and dopamine. And this can be very um, activating to the brain. Both of these medications will increase wakefulness. So that's what this is about. Yeah, I think so. So these are people. So this doesn't treat your sleep apnea. You still have the sleep apnea. It just takes care of the daytime sleepiness because when I had bad sleep apnea I would drive up to work every day and I would as soon as I parked I'd fall asleep and I'd wake up about 20 minutes later and I felt pretty good and if I was sitting in the afternoon typing on my computer writing notes or something I would doze off and when I got the the, the CPAP machine it, it helped that. That still happens to me some. And if I'm watching TV, I mean, the kids <laughs> will just laugh. You know, well, here's dad's going to take a nap because we're watching television. Together. Good old dad. Yeah. Passing out. Yeah, my dad did that down. too. But my dad had such bad snoring, and certainly he had sleep apnea. He had to. That, But his snoring was so loud that my bedroom was in the basement, you know, on the, the 
we had two ground floors, you know, where the house was built on a slope. So yep. there was the main ground floor where you went up to my parents' bedroom, and then from the main ground floor, you'd go down and come out to my bedroom and open to the backside. Mm-hmm. And um, so I was really two floors away, and he would snore so loud up there on the third floor that it would wake me up. Jeez. And That's I could like hear that. my mom going, Irv, turn over. Oh Her whole God. life. Irv, turn over. Yeah, he had to have terrible sleep. That oh, was man. awful. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So anyway, that's what this stuff is. Did you find out anything about bupropion? As it, far is, as, it, it is. is it, it, it's a, it's a, the same class. It's norepinephrine dopamine reuptake inhibitor? Yep. Okay, yep. that's what sure I thought. Is. And uh, so, yeah. So and when I took bupropion, I took it to uh, stop smoking. Right. Because it was sold as Zyban at the time. And one thing about it was that it I, it absolutely stopped my desire for cigarettes but it also had this other crazy effect where i would get up on a saturday at like 6 30 i would get out in the yard at seven in the morning and i would do yard work until the sun went down Hmm. which i never did stupid shit like that (laughs) it gave me so much jazzed up energy not in a speedy way at all right you know it wasn't a stimulant it just um gave me more whatever you know, mo- sure. I had more mojo. Sure, that's good. That's yeah. good stuff. Okay, so yeah, that's cool. That's yeah. a that's a cool question. Okay, so good one. Yep, yeah, we both. Well, all all of us learned something on that one. Excellent. Thank you, my friend. Good job. All right. Um, here's. I think this is our ramp salt friend. Let's see. Oops. <laughs> ramp salt. Hey, Doc. This is ramp salt. Yeah. Just wanted to check in. I've been doing a little traveling, listening to your show, awesome as usual. Thanks, man. I left a message earlier. I'm not sure if it actually went through, so I decided to call back again. Okay. I'm starting to develop moles, like literally five or six moles on my hand, on the side of my face, like part of my body. And I'm just curious as to why that is and why they're happening so rapidly. Okay. Have a good one, man. Hey, check him out, by the way, at wvrampsalt.com. He gets he takes ramps and he makes salt salt infused yeah or ramp infused ramp salt. infused salt yeah, and yeah. it's incredible and it's very very good W it's like for West Virginia wvrampsalt.com. dot com he didn't ask for a plug we just know who he is yeah. so those moles if they are flat and waxy and you can kind of pick them off and then they grow right back those are a th- those are what we used to call age spots. Mm-hmm. And we would uh, call... Liver spots. Yeah. You know, well, so they're kind of like liver spots. That's a little different. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, these things may be, when they start prolifer- proliferating like this, could very well be seborrheic keratoses. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're really hard to get rid of. We use bichloroacetic acid to just burn them to death. Right, burn them off, yep. And then you, it leaves a little pale scar behind, but it's better than having this big black, you know... Uh, waxy looks like a looks like a, looks like a mushroom growing off your skin. Kind C- of. Could be, but or yeah. a really flat mushroom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they're usually yeah. flat, yeah. but they're waxy and and uh, brown. Now there are other there are some other things, lentigos and stuff like that, and really impossible for us to tell mm-hmm. over the radio, and it's really hard to tell even from a photograph from a cell phone. So the best thing to do is just see your primary care, let them see them if they're at any. It concerning at all, they'll biopsy one or more of them, which sounds awful, but it's not. The easiest way to do it is just simply to uh, inject some, well, sterile prep of the area, inject some numbing medication, and then use a punch biopsy mm. to just, and a punch biopsy basically just a cylinder with a knife sharpened edge on it. Yep. And you just twist it and it goes right into the skin, pops out this little core mm. of skin. You send it off to the pathologist. They look at it under the microscope and you have your diagnosis. Right. And if it's totally benign but cosmetically yucky, you can get them fixed. You go to a med spa and they'll just laser them off. Right on. Or a dermatologist. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. WVRampSalt.com. Good for what ails you. It is it, it is good <laughs> for what ails you there, Dr. Scott. All right. Hello, Dr. Steve. Uh, I have a low white blood cell count, and I also have low platelets, and I was wondering if there would be any problems 
with taking the vaccine with uh, within correlation of that. So, thanks. Bye. Yeah. So uh, this person has some disorder that you know maybe a minimal immune compromised uh, uh, patient, and they want to know should they take uh, the, the vaccine. And I'm assuming they mean for COVID-19. Mm. <laughs> so um, if you have HIV or another immunocompromising condition or people who take immunosuppressive medications uh, or therapies may be at risk for severe COVID-19 and there isn't any data available to establish COVID-19 vaccine safety in these groups, but the currently authorized vaccines are not live vaccines. Okay, that's that's where if you're immunocompromised, you're really worried about a live vaccine mm-hmm. becoming virulent in you. In other words, if people who have off. a normal immune system, we give them a live attenuated vaccine. They do fine and they just their body fights it off, but it re- creates an immune response to it. So when the real vaccine hits them, they're under control. Whereas an immunocompromised person, that live attenuated vaccine could do some harm. In this case, this is this is not a live vaccine. It was never live. It's just a string of mRNA codons mm. that was synthesized in a lab. Is and in when I'm in that case, we're talking Moderna or Pfizer mm. or uh, a um, the AstraZeneca or Johnson and Johnson, which is a viral transport. It uses an actual virus for transport. Mm. If it were me, and I don't have any data to say this, I would do the mRNA one before I would do the adenovirus one. Mm-hmm. Even though that adenovirus really isn't virulent, you know, it's a transporter. Right. It's not really, um, uh, you know, an infective uh, virus mm-hmm. at that virus. point. It's not reproducing itself. It's reproducing the spike protein. Mm-hmm. But just to be on the safe side, I would do the Pfizer or Moderna if it were me. I'm just saying me. Talk to your primary care provider right. or your vaccinologist or virologist or whoever you're dealing with. And if if you have low platelet and low white count, you're seeing a, a hematologist, ask them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Really, I'm looking at the CDC website right now. It just says data are currently insufficient to form optimal timing of COVID-19 vaccines among people who are planning to receive immunosuppressive therapies. That's people getting chemo or biologicals for other uh, problems like rheumatoid arthritis or psoriatic arthritis. And they said, based on the general best practices for vaccination of immunocompromised people, COVID-19 vaccination should be completed at least two weeks before initiation of immunosuppressive therapies. When it's not possible to administer a complete COVID-19 series in advance, people on immunosuppressive therapy can still receive COVID-19 vaccination. Decisions to delay immunosuppressive therapy to complete COVID-19 vaccination should consider the person's risks related to their underlying condition, of course. So I, I, if I had someone that critically needed an immunosuppressive therapy, I would not delay it just because they hadn't quite finished their COVID-19 vaccine yet. Mm, nope. You just take the, take, the, um, uh, take the hit in that case. Yep. All right. And it just says people should be counseled about the unknown vaccine safety profile and effectiveness in immunocompromised populations. And it really depends on how you're immunocompromised as well. You know, if you have low B cell count, those are people are going to may have trouble making antibodies. Okay. And the low T cell count, they're going to have trouble generating uh, humoral immunity. Remember, there's uh, no, I'm sorry, cellular immunity. Mm-hmm. There's humoral immu- immunity, which is antibodies and then cellular immunity which are the white blood cells that remember things Mm -hmm. and eat things and come and chase things down that have been tagged with antibodies and destroy them and that kind of stuff kind of like angry moms like those are like the angry mom side of your immune system yeah 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 sure sure yeah Yeah, fighting for the babies the, the um Villagers with the pitchfork and torches, you know, that are storming like Frankenstein's <laughs> castle. <laughs> Get them some bitches out of here. <laughs> so anyway, so we don't know the answer. The CDC feels like it's it's probably fine because it is not a live vaccine. 
but uh, talk to your uh, health care provider on that one. All right. Uh, let's see. Don't know what this one is. Oh, why is everybody doing that? Yep. Hello? Hello? Are you on the party line? I swear there's a there's a transcript for this one. Okay, I'm going to give him two more seconds. Hey, Doc, this is Ramsall. Oh. Got a question. For oh, that's Ramsall. I already answered his question. Okay. All right. Very good. Uh, let's try this one. Hey, Dr. Steve. It's Mike from New York calling. Received Pfizer vaccine just after the two-week mark of my second vaccine. Came down with COVID. Okay. Um, symptoms aren't bad, more like a cold than anything else, thankfully. Uh, but I was just curious, is there any study done on whether I have a chance of getting COVID again? Huh. Or I know with the variants out there, there's probably uh, different ones I could pick up. Um, just wondering if there's any data available on if I'm free now, finally, of this mess, or if I still have to, to worry so much. Thanks very much. Have a great day. Yeah, the uh, CDC recently put out a number that said of all the people that have had the vaccine so far, only 6,000 have had breakthrough COVID-19. Hmm. So when you get vaccinated with a, with a vaccine that's 94% effective against re, you know, preventing infection, that means 6% of people... Uh, in whatever cohort group that you look at, will still get infected. Okay. So it's not a hundred percent, but it's pretty good, and it's pro- it may be a hundred percent from dying okay. or going to the hospital. Right. You may still get it, but it'll be a mild syndrome. So we we can't tell if this guy's syndrome was mild because he'd already had one vaccine and he was two weeks from there. Mm. You know, he was only a couple of days from the second one. But uh, presumably he mounted some immune response and then he got COVID-19, but it was a mild syndrome. But most people have a mild syndrome anyway, so we can't say that it was the vaccine that that saved this guy. You'll never be able to say that for any one person. Mm -hmm. Even if you reduce the incidence of death to zero, you can't say any one particular person was saved by the vaccine. You can only say this population was saved by the vaccine. Any one person, the vast majority of people have a mild syndrome. Yep. You know? Thankfully, yes. Yeah, it's just that the ones that don't get sicker and shit, and it's at a higher rate than normal things that we're used to, like influenza, which is about 0.1%. When you have this thing, at one, even if it was 1%, we initially thought it was 3 which would be 30 times higher than influenza. Mm-hmm. But even at ten times higher than influenza, that's why we were filling up uh, every hospital and our, our floors on our hospital. Every hospital. And anybody that says this thing is bullshit again, I just invite you to go back in time with me to January when we were when we were literally closing down whole wings of the hospitals just so we could put COVID nineteen patients mm-hmm. in there, and we were taking normal floors. Yep. That were just regular medicine surgery floors, and turning them into ICUs and putting ventilators in rooms that had never seen a ventilator since the hospital was built. Yep. And stopping out and, and tell me it's bullshit. surgeries and <clears throat> elective Well, that could just be and, somebody's choice. No, but but no, but as far as the hospitals were having to stop elective surgeries yeah, because they, they don't want to do that and they make they, money off of that exactly. stuff. Yeah, but they had to. Yeah. <clears throat> so anyway, all right. Today's episode is brought to you by Angie. Angie has made it easier than ever to connect with skilled professionals to get all your jobs and projects done well. Let me tell you, there's the version of it where you try to do something at home, and then there's a version of it where you have someone help you, you watch them do it the right way, and you go, thank God I didn't try to do that myself. I have fully done things around the home that I think look good, and then a bang in the night, and I wake up to a shelf collapsing, a painting falling off the wall. Like it, I've, I've seen it all go south. I own a home, and I can tell you... I know how much work it can take. Whether it's everyday maintenance and repairs or making dream projects a reality, it can be hard just to know where to start. But now all you need to do is Angie that and find a skilled local pro who will deliver the quality and expertise you need. Whatever your home project, big or small, indoor or outdoor, you can Angie that and connect with skilled professionals to get the project done well. Right now, one of my wish lists is I want a bike for my condo in Milwaukee and I would love 
to rig it up on a pulley in the ceiling because I have one of those like lofted ceilings. But I'm so scared to try that on my own. Angie has 20 years of home experience and they've combined it with new tools to simplify the whole process. Bring them your project online or with the Angie app. Answer a few questions and Angie can handle the rest from start to finish or help you compare quotes from multiple pros and connect instantly, which means you can take care of any home project in just a few taps. Because when it comes to getting the most out of your home, you can do this when you Angie that. Download the free Angie mobile app today or visit Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I.com. Let's see what this person is. Will be stopped today. For inquiries, please contact customer service. For English service, please press 2. Hello, this is Boa Bank. If your credit card is abnormal, the service will be stopped today. For inquiries, please contact customer service. Who falls for this? <laughs> Unfortunately, a lot of people. What? Uh, you know, if they, they don't would, even give you a number, hey, if people would quit falling for it, these these fucking people would just quit quit making these robocalls and and harassing us. You know, I got the uh, one. This is um, this is Social Security. Your account is uh, your account is abnormal. There is criminal activity. You will be served with a you know subpoena if mm-hmm. you don't call this number. Now, I say who falls for this? Mm-hmm. One of my really good friends, a person that I have the highest respect for, somehow ended up going to the going to CVS and buying four thousand dollars worth of gift cards and giving the numbers to somebody over the phone because they thought it was the FBI. So even I mean, I say who falls for this, and then I rem- just remembered that one of my friends did, and I was like, "What were you thinking?" She said, "I wasn't thinking. I was. So, they scared me so bad. I wasn't thinking." I've got a friend of mine did the same thing. Went to Walmart, bought seven thousand dollars worth of gift cards, gave them to him, and the same people called her back the next day and said, "Ma'am, none of those were worth." No. Oh, you got to get us some more. You got to get us seven thousand more. Did she, she went, do that? And got seven thousand more. Fourteen oh my grand. God. Yeah. Oh my god. And this is a smart lady. She's educated. She works Well, I told her, yeah, company, company. My yeah. friend is too. She's oh as smart gosh. as she can be. She's probably smarter than any of us and uh Oof. I told her, "Well, you fed a whole village, you know, with that money, I'm sure." You know. jeez. Oh, yeah, but if we if we quit falling for that, maybe they'd quit calling. Yeah. It wouldn't be so lucrative. There's you know? whole YouTube things on these guys that scam the scammers they'll run these virtual machines and then they'll invite them into their one guy one guy this was so great he somehow these these guys are all computer geniuses so he's running a virtual machine inside his computer so if they mess it up they can't do anything it's not a real machine Hmm. you know it's just simulated but they on the other side. I'm they already can't. confused. I know. I know. I know. Well, just no. I, know I don't mean. know how I know. to. No, I don't I know, know how to explain it any better than that. But it's no. a, it's a program that you run inside your computer right. that simulates the activity of a computer to the point where if you're looking in from the outside, you can't tell. Right. Might, it's going to run a little slower, but you can't see that. Right and uh, you know you'd have to run benchmarks on it, all this stuff. And this guy worked it out so that when he went to Bank of America's website to get his his uh, balance instead of showing $200 or whatever th- this app that he had written inside this virtual machine would substitute $2 million so the scammer saw that and started free you know because they go in they say well let me you know let me look in your in your machine and let me see if we can fix whatever bug is causing this problem mm-hmm. and then they'll go in and get your uh, uh, account numbers, or they will start transferring. They'll lock you out of your computer and then start transferring money out of your accounts into their accounts Ugh. and stuff like that. And he, he was just, oh, yeah, so I've got this account and I've got this account over there, and but don't touch that one. Ha, ha, ha. You know, that's my dad's account. It had $2 million in it, and the scammer was just, oh, they were, you know, rubbing oh, their hands together man. thinking, well, we got a big one here. He even put them on holding his supervisor. Yeah. And, uh, of course, it was all just bullshit. But those are fun videos to watch. That's cool. Um, But, yeah. um, So 
my understanding was that if you go to CVS or Walgreens or any place like that and you buy a bunch of gift cards that they're supposed to tell you that you're being scammed or at okay. least warn you that you're probably being scammed. Because okay. I've bought gift cards for my kid and they've said, hey, you know, are, are you buying this for somebody? It's like, well, what's it to you? Mm-hmm. And then they'll tell Same you why. why. Yeah. Interesting. So uh, it just boggles my mind that people are still going and buying gift cards yeah. and giving them the numbers. Lord, that's terrible. Well, hopefully we'll um, figure out a way to... to and, and, then, detected at the oh. front. and then once you do that, if you do it and you realize you're being scammed, can't you call... I guess they download the value immediately. Like, they don't yeah. just sit there on it. But couldn't you call the, the, the card company that makes those things and say, hey, wait a minute, don't... Don't uh, t- accept any transfers. You would think, but it must be it must be more difficult than that. I guess. I guess. Golly, it's, it's very sad. Well, this one, it just says this is Boa Bank. If your credit card is abnormal, the service will be stopped today. Please contact customer service. But it it doesn't. Oh, I I see. For English service, please plus two. So you have to do this one live. Mm. It's not something you can call back. Anyway, well, I'm glad I didn't fall for it. There you go. Okay, very good. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Um, yeah, I don't know if I can answer this one, but we'll look at it. Oh, wait a minute. Here, this guy's got two questions. Okay, here we go. Hey, Dr. Steve, Matt in Charleston. Hey, Matt. How's it going? That's good. Good. I'm good over here, too. Good, man. Hey, I uh, just finished listening to the most recent show, <laughs> and you touched on a uh, trip to Australia where you considered taking separate airplanes uh, from your wife. Uh, to uh, ensure that uh, if one of the planes were to crash, there would be one parent left. Yeah, we were crazy back then, and we had a 18 year old kid, and we were both relatively new parents. And you know, 18 month old. Eight? What did I say? 18 yeah, year old. Yeah, 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 yeah. 18 month. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now the 18 year old would be would be just fine, but yeah, the 18 month old kid. Not so much. Job. Okay, I like your thinking. Okay. However, if you were to do this, don't you then you you decrease the odds of both of you dying yes in a plane crash but you double the odds of one of you dying that's correct in the airplane good uh, am I as long as it's my wife then i would have been fine with it <laughs> <been> just fine. <laughs> no, i'm just kidding Easy to think that uh and also i'm glad you didn't do that because that's just not all right yeah yeah i was stupid no he's absolutely right and even then the odds are minuscule yep i mean crazy minuscule and what we could. I wonder if Alexa could answer that question. Alexa or Echo, what are the odds of dying in a plane crash? Here's something I found on the web. According to Deseret.com, there is a one in eleven million chance of dying in a plane crash. Yeah. So we went from one. Did that in a... answer your question? Yes. Thank you. Now I'll be quiet. <laughs> Thanks for your feedback. <laughs> she doesn't listen. Um, so we went from one in eleven that both of us would die to one in, you know, 5.5 that one of us would. (laughs) Million. So I'm still okay with those odds. Oh, yeah. We should have just, I mean, not worried about it. And we ultimately went together, thank goodness. Thank you, man. Excellent, excellent, excellent question. Or statement. Statement, yes. Hey, Dr. Steve. I've been having a lot of anal sex with my boyfriend, and I'm starting to develop a hemorrhoid. Okay, so you can uh, take care of so so a hemorrhoid is simply a varicose vein of the rectum, and you can get it a lot of different ways. Eating a, uh, a a typical American diet where you're pushing to get stool out, and you're constipated, and that's why you know there's a whole aisle of hemorrhoid creams on the market and another way would be you know friction if you are having anal sex and you are not lubing up properly so lots of lube go nice and slow and easy and make sure that uh, your partner is ready for it and uh, that they're into it and um, I know this was probably turning into a joke question. So what we do with joke questions on this show is we turn them into actual Real questions person. where we can learn something from them. Now, there was a study, by the way, on anal sex 
that because people are worried, well, will it cause me to be incontinent of stool? Because there's nothing worse than, you know, enjoying a fun night of anal sex and then be walking around dropping loads on the on the floor. Charting yourself. Constantly. Yeah. So uh, th- they did a study. And what they did was they stuck these balloon manometers up people's rectums. And then they would have them tighten up their sphincter and see how tight they could tighten it. And then they would record it. You'd do, you know, 10 trials or whatever. Then go have a big old fun time having all kinds of anal sex and then come back and do it again. And when they did that, indeed, the amount of pressure that they could mount with the sphincter was less than it was before they started the study. But there was no incontinence. And as a matter of fact, there was still plenty of sphincter tone to prevent turds from just blooping out. Mm -hmm. So what that tells us is, is that we are built with we're not borderline. You know, it's not just that we're right on the edge of being able to keep our stool in our rectums and evacuating it when we want to. We're not right on the edge. We have lots of redundancy. We have the ability to lose some of that tone in our sphincter and still uh, be completely continent. Especially at the end of it, the most distal part of it. Yep. Yep. So there you go. There you go. Good question. Good question. I am going to be on... The show called Who Are These Podcasts? And I'm going to be talking about female ejaculation, so I won't blow it on here, but we've talked about it before, and I wrote an article about it, and it's on our website. So if you go to drsteve.com and just put in female ejaculation, there is an article that I wrote, and that's what we're going to be talking about. And so I think it would be pretty interesting. So watch out for that episode. Cool. Uh, those boys took, they are doing a tribute to Opie and Anthony in that they are doing a bit that they did uh, for many years called Jocktober, and they do it with podcasts. And I figured when they asked me to go on, if I say no, the next podcast they're coming after is this one. <laughs> and then I'm going to hear an effing super cut of all of my vocal crutches, <laughs> the so's and the so anyways and the ums and ahs. And let me just just for a second talk about my vocal crutches i know i have them yes i they're getting worse as i get older and this is why we are doing a medical show when i'm on like a comedy show talking about marvel movies or if i'm on dc on screen talking about Zack snyder's justice league i don't have nearly as many vocal crutches because what i say isn't going to affect people's lives right So when we're talking about medical things, I'm scanning sometimes up to 12 words to uh, put them in a hierarchy so that I say the right word. Mm -hmm. And George Foreman said, the older you get, the more speed you lose, but you never lose your power. So my ability to process that stuff is still there. It just takes longer. Mm -hmm. And so if you try scanning 12 words every time you say anything because you want to make sure that you don't say something that someone's either going to come after you on or it's going to hurt them, you'll say um and ah and so anyway and all this bullshit, too. So anyway, (laughs) there, I just said it. Go fuck yourself. (laughs) All right. Let's see. Hey, Dr. Steve, answer why. Bill Gates is even involved in this stuff. <laughs> he's not a medical professional. I know he's got a lot of money. What is his uh, involvement in all these vaccines? I think you nailed it. He's got a lot of money, and he needs something to do, and he wants to leave an impact on the world, I think, is what his thinking is. Yeah, I think so, too. I don't think he's trying to rule the world or control the world. I think he's just trying to help, and he's got some. He's got a well, gift of some cash. Yeah. You're assigning more of a noble thing. Mine is more narcissistic. Yeah, than mine's, yours. yeah mine's more you're, noble. Yours, yeah. You're assigning more of, of a noble under underpinning to it. Mm-hmm. But I think that he wants to leave a legacy. And I, I'm sure at some point, a truly ethical person who has that much money goes, I should probably do something with this. Yes. Well, well, now, that doesn't mean they're going to choose the right thing. Mm-hmm what you and I might think it's the right thing. Right. But they may think that they're doing something that they think is the right thing. So I don't have a problem with it. The more people, the better, as far as I'm concerned. I haven't really seen what Bill Gates has really done. 
with this? What has his involvement been? I don't know, but I know Dolly gave a million dollars for uh, vaccine research. Dolly Parton did? Yes. Yeah, good she for sure her. Did. Yep, she sure did. And, well. Because uh, she is awesome. Yep. Her old neighbor. Yep, that's true. Let's see. Bill Gates. Gates. Uh, COVID. Let's see. What in the hell has he been doing? I don't know what he's really done. Um. AI reveals how Bill Gates' COVID conspiracy and other theories evolved online. That's pretty interesting. Here's Fair Observer says, Bill Gates, a danger to humanity. What? (laughs) Okay. um, Oh, the New Republic, Bill Gates, vaccine monster. What in the hell? Okay, Bill Gates. Oh, this is Reuters. Okay. Crazy and evil, Bill Gates surprised by pandemic conspiracies. Microsoft. This is from Reuters. Microsoft co-founder turned philanthropist Bill Gates says he's been taken back by the volume of crazy and evil conspiracy theories about him spreading on social media during the COVID-19 pandemic, but said on Wednesday he would like to explore what is behind them. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. And, oh, nice grammar, Bill. Nobody would have predicted that I and Dr. Fauci would be so prominent. Come on. This guy is one of the richest guys in the world. And this is one of my pet peeves. Yeah. If you watch, like, The Bachelor, which I'm forced to watch. Um, oh, God. They'll say, uh, Tiffany and I's relationship. Mm-hmm. Well, I just want to talk about Tiffany and I's relationship. It's not t- where does that come from? It makes you wonder where they Tiffany's and my Tiffany's. relationship. Yep. Okay. And it's not <laughs> I and Dr. Fauci. <laughs> and it's not Dr. Fauci and me either. That's what a lot of people would say. Nobody would have predicted that Dr. Fauci and me would be so prominent. That sounds right. It's wrong. Because yeah. if you take out Dr. Fauci and it says nobody would have predicted that me would be so prominent. Right. Okay. Do I really have to explain this to people? You would hope not, but evidently we do. Okay. So if you want to know, you always put yourself last. And then if you want to know if it's I or me... First, is it the object or the subject? Forget about that. Just take out the words, the other person, and then you'll know. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. They gave it to John and I would be incorrect, but I hear it every effing day. Mm-hmm. They gave it to John and me because you wouldn't say they gave it to I. Yep. Unless you're singing a reggae song that you can say <laughs> I and I, right? They gave it to <laughs> I and I or something. Uh, maybe true. I don't that's even know if that's true. true. A reggae song that is true. But um, you would say they gave it to me. Mm-hmm. So you would say they gave it to John and me. Mm-hmm. And then don't even get me started on the subjunctive text or uh, uh, tense, which I'm I blame Brian Koppelman for for me being you know I was a journalism major, but I've forgotten this one. And when I wrote my article about Ebola. When it remember when it first hit the United States, sure. I said if Ebola was was um, contagious, well, I can't remember what I said. Something like that. Uh, there'd be more numbers or something like that. And he he emailed me. He said, I think this is going to be a a um, an article people are going to read. But it's if Ebola were contagious. Mm. And then I had to go once again read up on the subjunctive text tense because nobody gets that right. Well, I don't want to say nobody, no. but few people get few, that right. Yeah. And uh, but anyway, but at least know how to say you and someone else in a damn sentence. If you're, particularly if you're Bill Gates, nobody would have predicted that I and Doctor Fauci would be so prominent. Good lord. Okay, anyway, so I don't know. It says Gates, a billionaire who stepped down as chairman of Microsoft Corporation in 2014, has through his philanthropic Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation committed at least 1.75 billion to the global response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Well, what they use the money for? Okay, and then it says that includes support for some makers of vaccines, diagnostics, and potential treatments. So I, I think that's fine. Hell, anybody that's trying to be part of the solution is fine with me. Right. Agreed. Whether and 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 money does help reasonable move things forward. Shit, yeah, it sure does. Does, yeah, reasonable people can disagree about what the right things to do are. But if you're in good faith trying to do the right thing, I'm okay with you. So, yep. all yep. right, but not when you say I and Doctor Fauci. Mm-hmm. And then I I like they didn't even put in parentheses sick 
you know, which they could have, mm-hmm. just to show that the journalist knew that that yeah, was wrong. It was better, but he's just transcribing it as it was that's said. That's right. That's right. Correct. Not 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 that the journalist wrote something incorrectly. Ugh. I don't want. <laughs> My God. <laughs> okay, I know I'm just being a dick. Okay, let's see. Okay. Hi, Dr. Steve. I was just curious, what does the RNA do in the vaccine towards your body once you get injected with the vaccine? Okay, yeah, happy to answer that. I really thought we were going to be doing COVID-free shows. I know there's a lot of COVID fatigue out there, but if you look at these questions that are coming in, yeah. there's no hardly any dick and nuts question. We had one question about anal well, sex. At least anal sex. That was awesome. Was nice, yeah. But, uh, yeah, so the mRNA, it's messenger RNA, I highly recommend that you do a um, YouTube search mm-hmm. on mRNA transcription. You're looking for a, like a 3D animation, and it'll blow your mind. So mRNA is just a set of instructions, just like a stack of computer cards back in the day. Mm-hmm. But they're very simple. Uh, There's three letter sequences that code for different amino acids. And there are these things called ribosomes that can actually read those those three letter sequences. And transcription RNA will come bring a um, uh, uh, an amino acid and it will only interface with that with its specific three code, uh, three letter code. Mm -hmm. And so when the transcription R- M- R- mRNA uh, meets up with the messenger RNA inside the ribosome, it will then attach this amino acid to this growing protein. And that's how you can code for proteins. And so you inject the mRNA. It goes into your cells, and the mRNA strand will just uh, attach itself to a ribosome, and then the body will just start to transcribe it. And then the protein it makes will turn into the spike protein from the coronavirus without the virus and without everything that goes with it it doesn't self-reproduce anymore uh it's not a virus Mm -hmm. it's just the instructions to make this single protein so what you're really doing is you're giving the body instructions to make the vaccine Mm -hmm. instead of making the vaccine in a vat you're making it in the human body. And then that protein will be expressed on the surface of the cells, and then the antibodies will go, what the hell is that? Mm-hmm. You, ain't, you, you ain't from around here. Yeah, you ain't from around here, are you? <laughs> oh, you got a pretty mouth, though. <laughs> um, and so then they'll, they'll attack it, and then the white blood cells get involved, and you get uh, cellular and humoral immunity, and hopefully long-lasting immunity. We'll see on that one yeah, also. Um, against this virus. And then the mRNA might get transcribed a couple of times, and it just disintegrates. Mm-hmm. And then the parts are used to build other mRNA strands to code other things. So body's constantly recycling this stuff. Yep. Doesn't change your genetic code. It never gets close to your DNA. No. It's out in the periphery. If the DNA is in the nucleus, if that's New York City, then the mRNA is Athens, Georgia. Mm-hmm. Still was, a nice place. I was going to say even 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 out in the it's the Bahamas or the the Bahamas. <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool. All right, hope or that j- helps. or Jamaica Mon okay. with I. There you go. Whatever. It's Doctor Scott. Everybody with his impressions. Uh, let me see. Um, okay. Don't know what this is. Yeah, Doctor Steve, I'm listening to your Corona. Uh, coverage here. Okay. I was wondering what percentage of people that have had the coronavirus have re-had the virus and if I've had the virus what benefit do I have with the vaccine? Okay. You ask an excellent question. The CDC is recommending that people get the vaccine even if you've had the coronavirus already because as far as we know the, the full immunity is not long lasting. So let's say you had the coronavirus back in November of 2020, and now it's, what is this, April of... 21, yep. God, now what? Well, wait, it started in 2019, right? Yeah, well, it started in 2019. The very in 2019, that's correct. Yep. Yeah, yeah, the the, it, the very beginning. Yeah. So let's say you had it in January of 2019, and now it's April of 20, 
No, 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 no. It was into 2019. Okay, January. 20. January of 20. Yeah. Okay, go fuck yourself, Dr. Scott. <laughs> You're right. Um, uh, so January of 20, 2020, and now it's April of 2021. Right. And what they're concerned about is that uh, you may not be protected anymore. They don't know. You mm-hmm. probably have cellular immunity, but they don't know about the um, humoral immunity. So they're just recommending that you get a vaccine so we can just put a stop to this thing. Let's just stop the infection. Be gone. That's what the CDC is thinking anyway. And uh, I don't necessarily disagree with them on that one. Uh, we just don't. We don't know enough to say you don't need to do it. You know, they're just doing... It's a guess, but it's an informed guess Mm -hmm. by the CDC. You hate for them to do anything based on a guess. Um, But when you have a novel situation like this, we haven't encountered a pandemic like this where we could actually do anything, well, ever. Right. And uh, so, yeah. And this is where these things come. Don't wear masks, wear masks, wear three masks, wear two masks. We're seeing the science evolve in front of our eyes. Mm -hmm. And the trick with science is when you believe something to be true and then there's evidence to the contrary, you have to change what you believe to be true. Mm -hmm. Now, when you start out saying, I know this is true and I'm going to find evidence to back up what I think, that's not science. So when you see things like, oh, well, it's stupid to wear a mask. Well, when there were 100 cases in Washington and none in Tennessee, it was stupid to wear a mask in Tennessee at that time. I wish more people in Washington had worn them back then. But um, now that there's millions of cases in the United States, it makes all kinds of sense to wear a mask. As we have said multiple times, and we'll talk about next week with our friend Metamether, hmm. uh, you want to decrease, you mitigate the risk any way you can, even if it's a 10% decrease. That'll that'll help us, particularly when you're 10% away from being at uh, herd immunity. Then a 10% difference makes a huge difference. Huge. So anyway, so anyway. If I say so anyway, again, you have the uh, permission to shoot me, Dr. Scott. No more vocal crutches for you. Oh, my God. I can't get rid of them. All right, man. We can't forget Rob Sprantz, Bob Kelly, Greg Hughes, Anthony Cumia, Jim Norton, Travis Teft, that Gould girl, Lois Johnson, Lois Johnson, Lois, Lewis Johnson, Paul Ovcharsky, sorry, Lois, Chowdy 1008, Eric Nagel, the Port Charlotte whore, the Saratoga skank, Roland Campos, sister of Chris, Sam Roberts, she who owns pigs and snakes, Pat Duffy, Dennis Falcone, Matt Kleinschmidt, Dale Dudley, Holly from the Gulf, the great Rob Bartlett, Casey's wet t-shirt, Carl's deviated septum, Bernie and Sid, Martha from Arkansas's daughter, Ron Bennington, and Fez Watley, whose support of this show has never gone unappreciated. Listen to our Sirius XM show on the Faction Talk channel. Sirius XM Channel 103, Saturdays at 7 p.m. Eastern, Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern, on demand and other times at Jim McClure's pleasure. Many thanks to our listeners. His voicemail and topic ideas make this job very easy. Go to our website, drsteve.com, for schedules, podcasts, and other crap. Don't forget Dr. Scott's website at simplyherbals.net. Until next time, check your stupid nuts for lumps. Quit smoking, get off your asses, and get some exercise. We'll see you in one week for the next edition of Weird Medicine. Thank you, Dr. Scott. Thank you. 